yo, welcome back to the Underground Treehouse Podcast, a podcast that discusses and reviews music of all genres. I am one fourth year host Ruben. Joining me as always is Keenan. What up, Marcos? Hi. And Isaac. Hello, hello. This week we are going to be reviewing the third studio album Hellfire by English rock band Black Midi. Uh, this is my pick, but before I explain why I picked it, uh, as always, we're going to go ahead and give you our music recommendations of the week as well as our local beer recommendation of the week. Kicking off the music recommendation will be Isaac. What you got? So the recommendation for this week is a little something heavier, a little something more brooding, a little something, you know, darker. Uh, it would be some, I guess, w- what would be considered to be doom metal. And the band is Kylesa and the song is called Drained. My friend Jazzy put me on. Shout out Jazzy. She showed me this song and the second I heard it, the vocal stood out to me, the sluggish guitars and the very heavy riffs just really really stood out to me so great listen if you like that like slow chord like very heavy shit and yeah give it a listen if you're into that sort of thing yo i have a really good recommendation that i hope you guys listen to it whenever i uh send it to you guys in the in the chat Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a hardcore band called world of pleasure sick they came out with like a small little ep like four tracks clean World of Pleasure and Friends, actually. Uh, the band is just <laughs> called World of Pleasure. and uh, Are they newer? I've never heard of them. Uh, they're, no, they're not really that new. Really? No, they've been out for a minute. They've been out since uh, 2020. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right. like during, a little bit newer. Oh, yeah, like during the pandemic. Well, yeah, yeah I guess it's new. But. Um, well, this is the first album that I've heard of them, and it's me right in. Mm-hmm. So World of Pleasure and the EP is World of Pleasure and Friends. So my recommendation for this week actually comes... Actually, you know what? Just shout out to this artist, Beach Bunny. <laughs> this artist, indie pop, indie pop mm. music, um, saved us this morning. We had a <laughs> seven and a half hour drive. It's the first thing that we played. Fuck no. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so the album is called Emotional Creature. Um, it's a new release. It actually just came out about four days ago by, like I said, um, indie pop artist, Beach Bunny. Um, very catchy, very poppy. Um, check it out. Songs I would recommend is uh, Oxygen and Dead Weight. So good. Check it out. My recommendation of the week is going to be the album Death Fame by hip hop artist Quell Chris or Kel Chris. I'm not too sure how exactly you say it. Uh, Q U E L L E. So Quell, Kel, something like that. I'll say Quell. <laughs> Quell Chris, <laughs> Death Fame. Um, this is a really fucking solid hip hop project. It got overshadowed because it dropped the same day as Kendrick. Oof. And that same day Kendrick dropped uh, The Smile, so that little side band that Tom York and Johnny Greenwood mm-hmm. did, they dropped an album that same day too. So you got two humongous albums dropping the same day as like a lesser-known hip-hop artist. Um, so I think it got overshadowed, but it definitely deserves the same type of praise and the same type of attention that those two albums got. Um, really good, solid album. It, it you know If you really appreciate that like real to the roots hip hop kind of music this album is just right up your alley um probably top tracks for me would be like alive ain't always living uh feed the head king black death fame it's the whole project is solid give it a listen it's worth your time for sure all right our local beer recommendation of the week is gonna be we're gonna have a steel bender back on we're gonna so i forget which podcast it was but we um shouted out their raspberry dynamite We're coming back with their Tangerine Dynamite. Tangy, citrusy, smooth. I mean, right on the can, that just like, that just describes it perfectly. Again, more description on the can. Citrusy, sweet aroma exploding from the tank. Smooth mouthfeel and a tangy, creamy, refreshing flavor reminiscent of a summertime treat. Jesus. Shit is so damn sweet. That sounds like you just read it off the can. Oh, because I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. it's, dude, it's so damn sweet, so damn good. I mean, we love the Raspberry Dynamite. This is just as good. As Ke- as Isaac had said on a couple podcasts back, it makes you aware. It lets you know <laughs> what the fuck you're drinking. And, uh, you know, that's a big reason why I picked this beer with this album because, spoiler, this fucking album kind of punches you in the face it and does. doesn't let up. So similar to this album, Tangerine Dynamite does the exact same thing. Tastes great. So yeah, again, Steel Bender, Grey Brewery off 2nd Street. Check them out. They deserve it. All right. Let's get into this. 
Hellfire by Black Midi. Uh, so the reason why I picked this is, so apparently it's sacrilegious to consider Black Midi post-punk now. I I guess considering how they've evolved as artists, I kind of get it, whatever. But as you know, I fucking love post-punk. You know, anything post-punk, I am I immediately gravitate towards. Um, and Black Midi, they dropped their debut album Schlagenheim in 2019. And I was all over this shit when it first came out, man. I think this is kind of really what put me on onto the post-punk scene. Um, you know, and it, it, it was like a gateway into the genre. Um but, uh, you know, Bl- Black Mini kind of spearheaded this whole movement, I feel like. Um, so every anything that they've really done has really kind of, like, piqued my interest. Um, with that being said, I mean, I, I kind of might, like, um, decredit myself because I haven't listened to the second album, Calviclade. <laughs> I've, listened, I've, I've listened to, like, maybe two tracks. Um, but, I mean, the first the first album, Schlagenheim, just holds up really well. Um, you know, if you listen to like Boom 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 or like Speedway or Reggae, it's just a really amazing album. And, uh, you know, they're just super creative and they're just super off the wall. And, you know, them as a group kind of like throws me out for a loop. You know what I mean? I kind of even don't feel like I know what I'm getting, even though I'm a fan of them. So I was like, like you guys, my other hosts have no idea about these guys. So I figured I would throw something out there that's a little bit more experimental and something that's kind of a gonna get our brains thinking a little bit more you know so uh yeah so that that's really the main reason why i picked black midi um i'm gonna be honest with you guys i don't even know how to fucking start this shit <laughs> like dude like the like, album is just gonna be a madness yeah we're gonna be all over it, the place it's just it i mean that's a perfect way to describe it as madness oh, you could um, say it's a chaotic masterpiece or a chaotic painting 100 percent, 100 percent, and i think the album artwork like honestly it's kind crazy. of like yeah exactly it represents it perfectly this is probably the most creative inventive garble you've ever heard it's like yeah. when you like you know when you first listen to it you're like what the fuck is going on you know it's just it's just full of all these different sounds and time signatures and crazy ass vocals there's just so much going on and it's like even when you listen to it on your like sixth or seventh listen, there's still something new you're picking up. You know, you're connecting dots in between themes. You're picking up different little riffs with the guitar or like different time signatures with the drums. It's just an album that, you know, kind of gives you so much up front. It's kind of hard to like take it in mm-hmm. on, on that first listen. Um, and again, like I said, it kind of gets a little bit easier as you listen to it a little bit more. But how do you guys feel about this? Like on your very first fucking listen? So I had no I, I I had no idea what was coming. Like you said, it's just so in your face, and it's hard because, like you said, even after like the sixth, seventh listen, like I'm still dissecting it because mm-hmm. it's just it's just too much. I mean, from the lyrics, from the jazz and the instruments, like it's just all up front and it's chaotic, mm-hmm. it's madness, but it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> it's so good and. Like just like diving into it, um, like I'm just I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about it. I am too. Um, off first listen, this instantly gave me Black Country New Road vibes, man. Instantly, I'm like, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. okay. I know I kind of have a blueprint of what I'm about to listen to, so I have my horizon opened up. And I'm like, okay, I'm. Let's see. Let's you know throw it at me. Let's see what Black Media is bringing. And yeah, they uh, did not disappoint with uh, this album um it was extremely organized chaos and um the instrumentation the sound engineering the lyricism the vocalist all did not disappoint whatsoever and you know even at times uh i'd be like confused at what i'm hearing (laughs) (laughs) even now it's almost like even now and i i heard this album four times today man i'm just like Sheesh, it's so hard, you know, to have a song or a verse or, you know, a beat imprinted in your head, just so you know, because it's so it's so chaotic, this album. Yeah, the <laughs> my first listening, uh, I to piggyback of what Marco said, I, I did get like Black Country New Road vibes from it. But once I like, you know, started like really getting into it, I realized, oh, this is this is a different beast entirely. 
like like everything about this is so fucking colorful textured layered and chaotic relentless like keenan said maddening bro it's fucking it's chaos it's literally something that you cannot comprehend and yet it's palatable it's listenable it's something that you can listen to enjoy discuss talk about and yet it drives you fucking insane it's the equivalent of the willy wonka riding down the river scene where he's like Bro. and he's going oh, and going shit. you know what i'm talking about yeah. with, with um what's his face van wilder or whatever what's yeah. gene wilder gene wilder yeah. like that that's literally how this album makes me feel it's just it's it's an experience on its own unlike no other Yes, I got Black Country New Road vibes at first, but then the more you break break it down, the more it's its own thing. The more it's very progressive and and very jazz influenced and and just just layered. It's just layered, very like layered. an onion. <laughs> Shout out Shrek, but it's yeah, very good on first listen, but quadrupled that good feeling on subsequent listenings. It's funny that you guys bring a black country. I think that's a good uh, that's a good comparison. This is like the schizophrenic, paranoid cousin <laughs> of black country. Right. It's you know what I mean. It's like take black country's like creativeness and kind of like out of the boxness and turn it up to a thousand, and fucking shoot them up with ketamine. And this is kind of like <laughs> there we go. And, and you have black midi. You have black midi. Um, a, bla- a black country new road is a painting on a canvas, and that and that canvas is white. Black Midi is a fucking Picasso painting, <laughs> bro. With, yeah, right? <laughs> dude. Hella surreal. Super. Like, like it's so nonsensical. But like you said, when you actually like give it a couple more listens, if you just stare at that painting a little bit longer, you're like, oh, okay. Well, now that makes sense. Oh, now I'm picking out this and this and this. Um, first track, Hellfire, <sighs> is like this huge wall of just like horns and guitar and the drums are blasting and the uh, lead vocalist is like firing off these like quick lyrics you know he's he's firing off these bars though boom 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 like the first track like really sets a good pace for what the album is going to give you i can you know? completely agree yeah it's yeah. literally how my notes is like based off the first track it's exactly what like um introduced the rest of the album for me like you said, Marcos, it's organized chaos. It's just so fucking wild, and oh, it's the, so abrasive. The fucking song is called Hellfire, so it's just like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe the fucking title of the album should have given us like a warning of what we were going to get. I don't think any of us thought we were going to get this. Oh, my God. So we're, we're talking about sound, right? Right now? Yeah, so I think, yeah. So we'll, we'll just talk about like the sound and like the overall um, instrumentation of the album. So I know that the instruments they use is really a lot and organized, but like... I heard a lot of static, or was that just like my headphones or something like that? But I'm pretty sure it wasn't because I listened to this album on like three different he- pairs of headphones. But I heard some static like included in the instruments. And I'm just like, honestly, out of I've heard this isn't the first time. Like you know, you hear like a little radio static or radio frequency or anything like that mm-hmm. off of uh, on a, on a song. But I feel like th- this is probably one of the best uh, albums that they interpreted on actually, like the production you're in, 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 in the production, yeah. Well, I mean, there was a couple of songs where they literally had, like, radio tuning. Exactly, so, right? So, yeah, so mm-hmm. that was a thing. Like, that was probably the static you were hearing because um, you hear it at the end of the first song. And then yeah. you hear it at the, um, what is it? Is it the halftime? halftime? Yeah. yeah, I think yeah so, it's, you know, it, you hear the, the actual, like, radio tuning. Mm-hmm. 66.6. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hellfire, Hellfire right? Radio. Hellfire what, was Radio. <laughs> what was the DJ's name? Raheem? Raheem. Yeah, yeah. 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 Raheem. <laughs> It, I think that's a reference to a uh, um, oh, what's a Spike Lee movie? Just do the right thing. It is. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, because yeah, DJ Raheem is in Do the Right Thing. Yeah, I don't genius. Right. As, uh, oh, they did. Yeah, as a notation. I don't need no genius. What? <laughs> <laughs> you are the mastermind. I am the genius. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Just oh, kidding. Allah, <laughs> Jizza the genius. He said. Jizza. Guy goes to one Jizza show. <laughs> yeah, I think he's all cool now. Ah, uh, you're pretty cool though. Yeah. This man's playing five head chess. <laughs> Word. <laughs> five, uh, head, <laughs> five head chess. <laughs> no, so, I mean, to talk about the sound, I mean, this jazz fusion, dude, it's like listening to the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack. Like, yeah. To, like, to 100, like you said, about Black Country. Like, 
it's just the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack just like turned to a thousand. And mm-hmm. that jazz, the horns, the everything, the who's the what's the name of the lead singer? Uh, it is George Creep. Yeah, yeah. Georgie Greep. G- Jordy Greep. So Jordy Greep, I mean, this man's lyrics and how you say the way he fires off his bars. I mean, like I said, we'll get into the lyrics because there's a song where he just goes off. <laughs> I Many mean, songs. this man, this man can do no wrong. Gordy has the heat to just mm-hmm. go off like he did. Oh, dude. But yeah. like I said, we'll get to that. Yeah. We will get to that. But overall, this sound, this sound is next level. And it's like, I want more of this jazz fusion. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's, you, I, you do get that though, right? You do get that the whole album here and there. Oh no, I want more of like oh, this. Oh, okay. I want more like <laughs> I thought, this. I thought, I, thought, I thought we were still on the first track, I, so I thought that's what you meant. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, yeah, just the overall sound. Yeah, just overall. I want more music that sounds like this because I've never heard anything that sounds like this. Yeah. So in your face and just so all over the place. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I didn't listen to the uh, second album, Calv- Calvaclade, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, but Schlagenheim, I mean, they, they've been very, like, experimental from the jump. But this is leaps and bounds ahead of fucking Schlagenheim. You know what I mean? Like, n- not to say that they don't have, like, nice grooves and nice harmonies on Hellfire because they definitely do. But Schlagenheim is a lot more, like, subdued. It's, you know, it's th- there's a lot more passages that's a lot more groovy. And you could kind of, like, like... Uh, like just a uh, normal listener or like a like a standard listener could listen to it and be like oh okay casual I get this listener. casual yes that's a that's the word i was looking for i don't think you could just play this shit casually for a casual <laughs> listener dude most a people turn this shit off but. A well <laughs> songs but i did for the most part i did oh, on our did. seven and a half hour <laughs> drive today <laughs> And then what and did they she think? actually fucked with it. Oh shit. Okay. What um so actually I kinda so I think we should get into that. Um so basically this whole album is just full of like these different noises and you know it it's very abrasive. It's hard to kinda like figure out what you're listening to. Which is why the fifth track still like immediately grabbed my attention when I first heard this album. Like still was just like I mean lyric wise sound wise still is just amazing man still is so good um it starts off real like almost uh like classic country kind of sounding it has this nice twang kind of like bluesy almost and then it eventually progresses into a little bit of chaos but then it eventually subdues and then the ending of the song is beautiful like the ending of the song has this like real nice acoustic guitars and it has these weird like bird or like bug sounds kind of like, you know, intertwined. It's so sick. It's very cinematic, very cinematic. So we get a two minute instrumental towards the end there in this yeah. one, which is nice. And right. then obviously, like you said, we have that, that beautiful fade out with the outro. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, this song, I could see how like it would grab your attention because it is like a nice break from the chaos. It's still, I feel like it's, the, I have it here. It's the only break from on the album for me this is the only song that gave me a break from all the chaotic instruments and you know production that the album produces mm-hmm. but besides our actual break that we get after this one oh yeah the after <laughs> yeah, the yeah actual, the radio break the, the actual <laughs> halftime break yeah no but i mean lyrically this is this is the break that was much needed actually mm-hmm. i get very huge elliot smith vibes from this oh, at, at, the, at the beginning <laughs> especially in the first half like it's super elliot smith and it's super like raw and i, I hate just saying raw because what is what does raw mean right mm-hmm. raw means guttural you feel it it's it's visceral that's exactly how I feel this song is. It's completely visceral. And and then like the instrumental. The instrumental is fucking out of this world because it it takes a complete left turn from the chaos. And it and it gives you something more structured and more quote unquote safe. But is it safe? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> what is considered safe when a song like this is considered safe? I mean, this song is so fucking gut wrenching. How's a song like this gut wrenching fucking quote unquote safe you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. the the instrumental almost reminds me of a cover by rob uh robin anderson it's a cover of chop suey as a matter of fact by Down. oh what the fuck yeah it, it's like a old like 40s uh cover and the instrumental to that cover reminds me of this and it's just like like it's just so catchy and and that's how this song is. It's completely catchy. It's probably one of the more, like you said, more accessible songs. 
You know what I mean? And the ending was fucking beautiful. The first few times I heard it, it was like a fucking Tim Burton song. Walking through a fucking forest in through stop motion. That's how I felt that was. With all the little like chirpings and, and the little Mother Nature. And then... N- not to mention what that could represent in the lyrics. I know we haven't got to the lyrics, so I don't want to. Well, I was actually going to say but we could probably integrate all of it right now, honestly. So I mean, but let's fin- let's finish the sound first. We, we uh, unless you want to go into it because I fucking. Well, we could finish the sound of the song first. Okay, but but I think, like, I, so this is one thing that I didn't really touch on, which I probably should have introducing this album is, you know. The sound is just so huge and hulking, but the fucking the lyrics that go along with the song just adds a whole nother layer. So I probably should just we should probably just integrate the lyrics into it's our a, song discussions. Yeah, it you will, know? I mean it would it would bring up that discussion that Keenan had earlier about what the actual lyrics meant too. Yeah, like definitely. Okay, so the lyrics to this song, super fucking sad song, gut wrenching. I have here in my notes, sad song, but at least he gets over it by the end. And that's why you hear the beautiful sound of nature that might symbolize the growth in the same way that Mother Nature grows. The beauty of Mother Nature because he got over it, because he could grow as a person and and finally get over this darkness and he sees the light. It, It symbolizes the birds chirping and the sounds of Mother Nature the same way that they release a beauty that that is the ending the last two minutes you know what i'm saying like the last two minutes is the equivalent of getting over the relationship that's literally what i have this is him healing from a post breakup a hundred percent that's literally what i have especially during the whole song when he's just like he's not coming to terms with it like he cannot he cannot stand the fact that it's eventually gonna end it's gonna break so there's a point in that in that in that two minute instrumental where he goes really fucking hard where the instruments pick up where the production really picks up Mm -hmm. and i'm like yo he's going through it right now and then it just like how he said it just peacefully goes along like you're finally vibing with live like you're finally you know soothing your wounds and finally trying to find yourself and that's literally have my fucking notes that's crazy yep and it perfectly leads to like the outro lyrics of the song i mean like how you said i went to see him at the obviously visiting air arena you were a mile away but doing so good it's just like content man it's like content yeah just leave it i don't know why but well i mean i kind of know why because of the way the song you yeah, know progresses okay. but just those last two bars you were a mile away but doing so good it's just like <sighs> Fuck, I don't want to see you this far. I don't want to see you doing good, but you know what? It is what it is. And then, like you said, the instrumentation just leads you to this nice, serene kind of picture. You it's know? me right now, baby. What's up? And then the oh, chaos yeah. picks up. <laughs> yeah, and then right after, we get the most obnoxious fucking, like, dial tone fucking, like, radio break intro ever or interlude. That's kind of that's kind of heat, though, honestly, because they, they shout out their, uh, their uh, other band, too. The Orange Boys, what are they called? Oh, yeah. So they shout out... Uh, Give me a second. The, yeah, the Orange Tree Boys, which yeah. is like their own side project, yeah, right? It's their, it's, uh, it it's consists of other members from Black Midi, so it's dope that they gave a shout-out to their other band. Yeah, that's so funny, dude. Mm-hmm. Going back to Hellfire. Um, so, like we said, Hellfire kind of does a really good job at, you know, setting up the album. We are... You know, when we when we alluded to that, we were more so talking about the sound, but the lyrics, man, the lyrics really set it up. Um You know, with this one, I I think there's kind of a couple, you know, connecting themes within this album. But I think, have you guys ever listened to the album Murder Ballads by Nick Cave? No. No. No? So Murder Ballads by Nick Cave is essentially like a compilation of short stories. But the whole album is based around murder. Like each song tells a different story about murder. I think this album kind of does a similar thing. I think Hell and Sin is the overall theme and each song kind of gives you a different uh, story of sin or of greed or, um, you know, uh, something like that, you know, purgatory. Yeah. Purgatory should, I mean, that could be definitely included, you know? (laughs) And I think hellfire lyrically definitely does a good job at that. You know, it's essentially like to me, the way I took it was somebody getting old and the devil's essentially being like, dodge, just come into sin, bro. Like, (laughs) fuck it. Who cares? You know, compromise yourself essentially you know and i think that leads to what the album is talking about is these different caveats of sin and shit like that i took it a little bit different but i completely see how you would see it that way how'd you take it so like essentially growing old and all the shortcomings that come with it is hell 
is torture. That's is, what I got from it. Because oh, it's like the hardships of torturous. growing up and your body breaking down, mm-hmm. going through hell. I'm well, like, that, that's definitely, yeah. I'm like 50-50. On with you guys to be honest on that i get the ha, ha, your guys' message for sure but i also get your the, the other half of your message mm-hmm. it's kind of like bro your dick don't work like just come in who gives a fuck you know because <laughs> <laughs> i want <laughs> but like if your dick don't work isn't that a living hell like right well, well, yeah, yeah but, but, okay, yeah, okay, but so. and then there's also like on one of the songs that we'll get into of him you know fucking uh uh punishing a a, a pimp right oh, Word. Yeah. yeah 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 it's well yeah that's why i think it's just a amalgamation of all these different sins because almost every sin is kind of touched on you know i guess going back to still i don't know if that could really fit maybe lust i guess but i think that's more of like like envy. still i mean lust is a it, sin, it could be so. like envy or lust yeah but but no nah, lust is super um is oh lust would be um dangerous the defense or it could be the defense Oh, dangerously! Oh, no, 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 no! It would be the defense. It'd be the defense because it's the dude cause running it's the brothel. The pimp. Yeah, it's yeah. The yeah, yeah. So that's what I was talking so, about. So yeah, I guess still kind of doesn't fit in my theory now that I think about it, because I don't know what sin or like what hellscape that would be. But well, I'm not religious. Maybe be- it could be a sin no matter what. So like, <laughs> <or>. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, to rock this hard is it really a sin? I mean, Jesus. Jesus. That was corny. That was corny. <laughs> Boo this man. Jesus died for our sins, so we should be sinning all the time. If not, he died for yeah. nothing. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Fuck. Well, cheers to that, brother. Yes, cheers to that, brother. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So, when I said his dick don't work, like, that's just not a random. <laughs> it's, it's not just, like, a random-ass joke. Like, literally in the third verse, he's talking about how, like, his dick doesn't get hard when he needs it to, you know? And then when it does, it's useless. Like, like, like I mean, basically what we said earlier, it's just all about the hardships of getting old. Yeah. You know, and you you'll see that further along in the album too. Other other lyrics, so this is why how far is good because even in the lyrics it tells you what he's gonna be talking about mm-hmm. throughout that whole album. Right, right, yeah, for sure. Um, or to give you guys a little bit of idea of how it starts off, you know, and why we're saying you know getting old is its own hell. Um, the very first verse is you know there's always scratching and odd twitch, hearing loss, a ringing noise, new flesh, a new bump, and weightlessness. A mirage, a tumor, a scar, and when one is fixed, another breaks. So it's essentially, you know, just kind of growing old, dog. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, it's... Hey, we, we, skateboarding when we're teenagers, fucking snorting <laughs> coke, dog, and doing all this <laughs> shit. We do that shit now when we're 30s, oh, dude. Oh, bro, that's just going to catch up to us, dude. <laughs> we're going to have to call into work tomorrow, bro. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of going to contradict myself with what I said about the overall theme because the second song, Sugar Zoo... It's really just a song about boxers, and I guess thinking about it, I guess I could maybe see pride. It's not, but, though. It is not. But, That's why I like it, because he uses that, uh, not an, not anatomy, analogy. Uh-huh. He uses that analogy as a boxing ring of, I don't know who the other guy is, Sugar Mama? What is it? Sugar, <laughs> sugar <laughs> Mama. <laughs> <laughs> it's sugar something dog sugar uh sugar sun, sun sh- it is not sh- he would lose we would all lose that fight. oh he'd get trashed he bro would get trashed dog uh he would get knocked out cold so the two boxes are sun sugar and sun zoo yeah so he sun zoo is what i got right you got correct. that correct yeah, and sun sugar is all the shit in life that he's fighting through right correct oh you can see that yeah wow. yeah I and that's right why like at the end he's he won. The audience has been satisfied. Like they're happy, and you know he's he got through it, or he's getting through it. Which well, you know he mm-hmm. won the boxing match, so he's still kind of going through it. But right. Oh well, that makes sense. The reason why I think everything was intertwined with sin is because, like I said, I thought each song had like its own interpretation of sin, and I thought this song was more about like pride or like wrath or something because it's literally a boxing match. And the dude smokes him like in the middle of the match, but shit. I guess when it's all a metaphor. But I mean, you no. also get death. Yeah, yeah. You, you get death in it. I mean, because sugar does die, mm-hmm. and no one is paying attention to him because uh, what's the Sun Tzu? Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is the winner, so the audience wants, so the audience is happy. They're fulfilled. But meanwhile, you got this guy back here dying with no doctor on the scene, as he says. I took Sugar Zoo as. More of a like a allegory for like 
the media and the way that people are so desensitized by the media because it said that fool got smoked and the whole audience was cheering and happy and satisfied. So what does that tell you? That they don't care about the human casualty, a human life. They care about entertainment. They care oh, about yeah. what's real. Like they, they really only care about what is enjoyable to themselves. You know what I mean? No doctor on the scene. The audience won. In a single line explaining the world's numbness of violence because it's entertaining. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then with the crazy horns on top of it, like it, it's just it to me, it read as more of a microscope on society itself mm -hmm. or at least Western society itself. I mean, I, I don't know too much about other cultures, but I know for sure Western society and how we're so desensitized to everything because of what we see on the news and on the Internet that as long as it's entertaining. Who really gives a fuck who's on the other side of that screen? Mm -hmm. As long as you're good, who cares? You know what I mean? Or, That's how I took it. Or what if it's about him? You know, like, you know, people that listen to his music don't really give a fuck about what, what he's going through as long as he produces his music. That's a beautiful take could as be. well. It could, could be, be. it could be either or. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was saying earlier. Like on your sixth or seventh listen, you know, you, you can There's think so of many something completely different. Yeah, exactly. There's so many different ways you can take not only the songs, but the album as a whole. You know, it's. It's definitely a fun listen in that regard, you know. Yeah. You can always go back to it and find something else that you previously hadn't thought of, you know. Shout out that Bruce Buffer type ass intro though. For real. That shit, let's get ready to thunder. Oh, whatever he says. Dude, for real. That shit was Ladies and gentlemen. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and also the instrumental to this was completely different from all the others. I think it, it, it's more akin to like nineteen forties, like big band almost, like like very show tunes esque. If any of you are familiar with the video game Cuphead, I don't know if anybody if you played Cuphead. I've talked about it so many times, and you don't even you remember. Can edit uh -huh. that shit out. Say it again. I've talked about it plenty of times. You know, oh, yeah. Cuphead. Okay, so there you yeah. go. The fucking Cuphead. Cuphead. Cuphead, for those who don't know, is a video game in the art style of old 1940s cartoons. Everything is hand-drawn animation. It looks like an old Walt Disney cartoon. Yeah, but and uh, that should be... That song right there, Sugar Zoo, should be the fucking boss theme to a fucking Cuphead boss. Oh, dude, with dude. How fucking big band that shit is. Because that shit's fucking hard. Oh, yeah. And it's so exuberant and so exciting and so vibrant. And yet... Bro, that fool got smoked at the end of the day. <laughs> and, and you're not wrong. I was going to add on to, on to that because uh, the one thing that Cuphead did uh, extremely well on is the soundtrack that they produce is extremely successful soundtrack. And then on top of that, they do use the very similar uh, knockout uh, sound. Yes. Sound oh, yeah. Tones that it'd be, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's funny. So it would, be, it would fit right in. Completely agree. So out of I mean out of all the songs on this album, this song the instrument wise is what stuck out stood out to me the most because this is when you first hear that heavy jazz fusion that I was talking about in the beginning that cowboy bebop sound mm -hmm. and this song, um, like how you were saying Isaac with the instruments, this is the one that stuck out the most. Like not even given the story because the story was kind of like random, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the instruments carried this song for me, and those horns, nice. The horns over the guitar, the way it's just the, all over the place. Everything is just like, but no, no, but no, 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 but no, no, like you that's know what true. I mean. No, I agree with Isaac, dog. The but, horns stuck out really, 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 really. Well, I, yeah, I think. I, I think mean, I'll just agree instruments in general. Yeah. Yeah. But I could see why you'd say that because the guitar was so like rhythmic and but yet it was so like in your face it was very zappa-esque yes it was as my friend is wearing a zappa shirt <laughs> shout out keenan <laughs> Ooh, thank you and i i think the two songs that really kind of match the energy of sugar zoo is welcome to hell and the race is about to begin the yes. race is about to begin is do you want to start with that let's start with that mm, uh, okay Let, let's start with the race is about to begin because this is like the monstrous track of the album holy fuck yeah i almost don't want to start with it because there's so like i like i want that to be our crescendo but we can start with it now oh so we don't yeah. know about our character yet true, true, true. oh because we haven't we haven't we know about yeah, yeah, yeah. tristan many, bongo many. we gotta start with okay welcome to hell see that that's what's crazy about this there's all or these crazy it, uh, connections and shit oh it is welcome to hell it you're is. right you're right yeah you're okay right. so yeah so like i said welcome to hell funky we'll as hell 
sorry. funky as hell. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, like the the reason why I um you know kind of compare the two songs because they both have like very hectic big sounds you know just as um sugar zoo does um but welcome to hell and uh the race is about to begin even have like similar chord progressions like even the the beginning riff it sounds very similar um but yes we should start with welcome to hell because there's only like one reoccurring character in this whole thing and he's introduced in welcome to hell which is bongo tristan Tristan Bongo. Bongo. Oh, that's it. That is his first name. My bad. <laughs> it's just fucking these. Oh, that was like a nice, yeah, like a nice, yeah, nice James Bond, <laughs> yeah, Bongo. entrance. Tristan Bongo. Tristan, Bongo. Tristan Bongo. Tristan Bongo. So the song essentially has it, it. It's the story of a man named Tristan Bongo who's going through his like mandatory military service. The way I took it was, you know, like when you're when you're deployed, you know, you kind of go out. You have those free weekends, so you go out and you kind of like hit the town. I took the song as him like hitting the town and like kind of exploring the place that he's deployed at. But then, you know, his his superior is essentially like explaining all these atrocities that he's committed and basically being like, nah, listen, Bongo, like this shit is it's just normal. It's the shit we do. And Bongo's like, nah, no, 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 I don't do that. And then he eventually gets kind of like discharged from the military. Um, is that right? Kind of. That's kind of how I took it. So I got that. And then I also got like his struggles of what he's going through from the war, especially, um, especially in bridge two, because Mm -hmm. right now it's his superior telling the story. Right. And in bridge two, he says, we did it all. We seen it all. And worse, much worse son, the massacres of ages, too many to recall. So he's like, I got it. Like snap out of it. Like, We've all been through this. It's his mm-hmm. PTSD, dog. And, you know, they're telling him, like, uh, yeah. yeah, he has one through mental issues on that song. So I thought in that bridge, too, when he's saying, we did it all, we seen it all, much worse, son. I thought it was the superior calling him son, essentially saying, like, we've done it all. You know, no. now it's your turn oh. to do it. That's how I took the it. The superior's a dick. Oh, he's a fucking dick. Yeah, the superior's yeah. a dick. And then, I mean, the verse right after that, I mean, he starts... He starts, you know, kind of going into detail about, you know, people dying, like limbs, mm-hmm. you know, limbs rendered birds by the speed they flew off, a soup nothingness that once was your best friend, Fuck. motherless children and temptress widows, the wild, the useless, the dead, the untamable. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, damn. I just got to <laughs> go into great detail. So I got it as like this man's going through some stuff. Okay. Yeah. So perfectly said, like Marco said, PTSD. Tell me what you guys think of this line right here. I have a lot of different interpretations, but I want to hear your guys' interpretations Spit it. first. Spit it. And we'll Spit see it. if we agree. Spit it. <laughs> In this land of oysters, you are the world. Which is a play on the world is your oyster. So it is the world. I thought it was the worm. It I thought he said off. the worm. It but... comes off like that when you listen to it. Okay. Yeah, and even in Rap Genius, he kind of... Uh, he hints at being the worm. No, no. Uh, how the worm yeah, is they, they misspell it, but it's the world. Yeah. So it is the world? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fuck, what, dude. What do you think of that? What do you think of Say that? Say it again. In this land of oysters, you are the world. Um, That's hard. I mean... It, that is hard, right? Yeah. Because you can take it so many different ways. You could take it as... I am the covenant. I am like the, you know, the end all be all. I am the world. And these are, you know, so for, you know, it, it could be very self centered or it could be the total opposite where they are these magnificent things and you just have to pass them by because you are the world. You, you have no say in your own life, like a private, like, like, a fucking, you know, a military lapdog who has no say in his life because the commander is telling him what to do. Right there, boom. It's the same way. Yeah, right there, boom. I think that's it right there. Because I was, I was going to ask you, who do you, who, who, if, I don't recall, but who says it? Who says the it, line? The commander, is it Bongo? The commander. Yeah. yeah because in the, the line right after, that, he says, yeah. like, you know, painless, numb, numbness, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. it's fucking yeah, chalk, bro. Yeah, the latter, what you said is correct. I or are like. we just looking too much into it? Because also, this man has a bunch of just silly nonsense lyrics. Because he, he also does. he also so. does in one of the songs he says you're as useless as a libs on a fish's eye. <laughs> I and literally had that wrote so, down, and that's that. fucking hard. That it, but no, you know I why mean, that's hard I though, t- right? I tweeted that. I literally tweeted that. <laughs> but you know why that's hard, right? Hit me. 
because fish don't have eyelids because they're fucking useless because they exactly. don't need a blink because they're underwater. They don't need a blink. They don't need eyelids. They've evolved past the need of eyelids. You're as useless, useless. as eyelids on as a fish. On you're a so fish. fucking, you're as fucking useless as a fucking quadriplegic at a water park. Like, bro, like <laughs> I need you to step down to like a six. <laughs> I thank you for that. It's a good album. It was a great <laughs> album. But I just thought maybe like, are, are we looking too much into it? Because there is a bunch of silly lyrics. I mean, who knows? But this is the point of this it album. Is. It's yeah. a fucking painting. That's very true. That's yeah. very you true. Interpret it. Yeah, it could have you this. The one person could be like, yo, this is all fucking nonsense. Literally every single lyric is nonsense. Some other guy could make a three hour review about it going into detail of what he thinks. <laughs> it's going to be us. <laughs> yeah so tune in is. hopefully yeah. it's not sorry so there was these instrumental slams that just were so fucking brooding if if you know what i'm referring to mm-hmm. it, it it happens around the two minute and three minute mark it's not throughout the whole instrumental but it it just sounds so fucking debilitating like it just it just fucking gets you bro it's just I'm a big fan of like over the top operatic, you know, cacophony of sound. Like I love that shit. And in this song, it gives you a taste of it. It gives you just a little smidge of it, which makes sense for the the themes of this song where it gives you a taste of this character and what they go through, but at the end it doesn't, you know, give you everything because it's not the rest of this story to tell, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I really, really enjoy the instrumental on this track. And I mean, towards the end of the song, it's I think it's the fifth verse when everything just picks up and it just goes straight punk. Yeah, it dude, it was hella fucking punk. Bro, that <laughs> shit was nuts. hard. And it's it's funny because um, under the recommended artists for Black Midi, Soul Glow is under there. That's so crazy. And it's crazy. I, I honestly would have never connected that. Because Soul Glow is just hardcore punk, and as far as like. I guess how fast they just sing. That's like the only like common thing that thing. they have. <laughs> yeah. But I think that brings up a good point. Um, in that Black Mini does a really good job at, you know, combining all these different genres. You know, it's you could tell that they have a ton of different influences, like from punk to like almost jazz, bro- jazz from Broadway, prog rock. Like it's it's crazy how they're able to just mix all these different sounds together and make something that at first listen sounds jumbled up. But as you listen, it's like, wow, okay, it's actually layered and it's actually sectioned off. Um, I think that kind of leads us into uh, the race is about to begin, which we uh, continue our story of Tristan Bongo, which finds him at a at a fucking horse race. The rest so, of his life. The rest of his life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is basically, life, yeah, so this is him after he's been discharged from the military and he goes and he, um, you know, starts to bet on these horse races. And that's, uh, dude, okay, so... He leaves everything behind us because of these fucking races. Exactly. Exactly. He, you know, he's, and he tries to justify it too. And he tries. He tries. Um, again, like, like with my whole, uh, with with my idea of like each song, you know, represented a different kind of sin. I thought this one was greed. Um, dude, the seventh. Okay, so there's a there's there like there's what ten verses on this on this track. Let's see. There's okay. There's only seven with an outro, so technically eight. But dude. This seventh verse is bar after bar. And this is like probably the the big crescendo. This is only what the uh, – let me look it up real quick. This is only the – well, it's the seventh track. So, I mean, we have three more tracks after this. But really, I feel like this is the climax of the sound. I agree. It's just so like as soon as this seventh verse hits, holy fuck. What what is the beats per minute on this? I was gonna say this dude does not <laughs> stop for what a whole minute and a half, dude. Almost two minutes. Oh my god! Firing off these lyrics, and as you know, you guys had said, this whole seventh verse is essentially him like trying to justify why he became like this degenerate gambler. You know what I mean? And <sighs> like so, then he he has these lyrics. Um, the race was ran thirty years back, and each day since the same. You know, so so basically that's him just saying he succumbed to this disease of gambling. For 30, for 30 years. years. For 30 years. And it's gone so bad to where it's like his whole life revolves around this. And he just like, you know, there, there's nothing left useful in his life. And fuck. It's just any addict trying to just justify what they're going through. Mm-hmm. And that's literally what we get in, uh, what, full two minutes. Dude, 
Fuck. Full two minutes just firing this shit off. Like literally no pause. No pause. No pause. He just goes. Like yeah. the only way we can explain it is like you just have to go listen to it for yourself. Really? Like, like literally just no pause. This man just goes for two minutes. Mm-hmm. And like you said, this is definitely like the climax of the album. Mm-hmm. And I mean, RIP my boy Bongo. Right. <laughs> I mean, dude. It's talked after this, bro. He's done hey. after this. Hey, he went, he went, he went, he went happy, dog. I'd be happy just like went off like uh horse gambling. Fuck that. Bro, he didn't even get the blonde. So he didn't the blonde he is making out with some four eyed dude four-eyed or four eyed fucker. Nah. He still, Shout out to he four still eyes. went out gambling, dog. He went out a happy dude. Yeah, I guess I guess it was on his own terms, but yeah, it was on his own fucking terms for sure. <laughs> for thirty years, fuck. <laughs> so I have a whole fucking paragraph written for this one. Okay, if you guys don't mind. Go ahead. Well, hold on. Let's let's start from the beginning real quick. In the genius okay, yeah, annotations, they're listing all the horses, right? Like, and <laughs> there's a horse named Mrs. Gonorrhea. <laughs> And if you click on the annotation on Genius, it says, your mom. <laughs> and it has like 40 upvotes, bro. And it's fucking comedy, bro. That shit got me cracking the fuck Yo, up. Yo, internet trolls are on a different level. It's dog. so fucking funny. Your mom. Oh, shit. With the you and everything. All right. They got your ass, though. So. They got my ass. I clicked <laughs> on that shit. Yeah. What does Mrs. Gonorrhea mean? What's the deeper meaning behind that? Is it your mom? Your mom. Uh, they got your your mom. Ass, dog. <laughs> They fucking Y R W R M and it's verified. U-M. Yep, I'm about it's to a up- verified. It's I'm a verified it right now. I just uploaded it. It's 48 now. <laughs> so silly. Uh, I was right. 47. Yeah, it was 47. Okay. Okay. That's yeah, fucking now. funny. So what I have here is, homie barred the fuck out, not stopping for even a second, building higher and higher. And I know I already said this before, but this is really where it is more uh meaningful the willy wonka scene where they're floating down the river going and going that's literally this scene because it's because it is descending further and further into madness which is apropos to the feeling of gambling and going further and further down a hole spiral spiraling your life deeper and deeper into a hole that's too deep too wide and forever black and then like marco's you know alluded the ending is a false light the end of the tunnel it sounds so beautiful so light so freeing but really it's just his justification the same way an addict would justify their addictions by you know by whatever means but it's their means they're justifying their means and the justification matched with the lightness of the sound makes you think that oh maybe this justification is real but it's not Mm. it's just a light in the dark hole because whatever he says isn't really a justification it's an addict's fucking it's their own warped way of thinking about it it's their own warped way of thinking about it without any really without any solid uh basis to stand on Mm-hmm. And I and I think the fact that they match that lightheartedness with the justification is fucking beautiful mm-hmm. because an addict will say this, that, and the third to make their point. And the fact that the instrumental mixed with the lyrics does that essentially is just such a clever way of wrapping up this story mm-hmm. of Mr. Tristan Bongo. Tristan Bongo. Rip. Bongo. I, I think the outro lyrics, you know, describe that perfectly because the outro lyrics are all about, you know, somebody at their worst becoming their best. You know, the old clown can be a martyr and the whore can be an angel. The hack becomes a master. The crass becomes divine. So, Making again, excuses. Exactly. It's like, well, I mean, you know, everybody can get out of it. You know, everybody can turn around. But the, and then and then right after that, all the sins irrepressible, basically saying, well, we, we're, we're all just going to sin anyways, you know? It's not my fault. We're all bound to it. You know what I mean? What did it's, I say earlier, man? No, you hit it on the head. You know, this is exactly what you said. So so those two songs were really like the epitome of the sound, you know? The, the you know, fuck, we've, we've kind of, all right, we've got over the hump, you know? 
I mean, we still have three more tracks after this, and we have a couple tracks here and there that we'll get to. Um, but overall, the sound kind of gets a little bit more subdued. Um, I, I guess, you know, the the song that would probably match that energy or just be right below it would be maybe the closing track, 27 Questions. Oh, yeah. Um, just because that one gets super fried out at the very end of it. My um, least favorite track. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Honestly, I'm really nitpicky with it. So it's because of the piano random piano that they put in honestly like that's little honestly it, like, mm-hmm. it just took me out of it i hate that part piano is a little too much it, over a little too much is an understatement <laughs> <laughs> dude i'm so nitpicky with that i just hated it like i completely hated it so whenever it comes on i'm just like fuck uh-huh. it completely takes me out of the zone but his storytelling and the part where he questions off the 27 questions fucking fire oh dude. the production besides the piano fucking fire but mm-hmm. that's it so, see, and I didn't really like this song only because of how abruptly it ends. This is the ending track. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect it to just end so abruptly like that. And so, like Marco said, I mean, the 27 questions, it does match the energy uh, of, you know, the race is about to begin, especially as he fires off those 27 questions. So that's nice. And the story, I did like the story of it. But again, just the way it ends to end an album right like that especially once it started off so heavy and especially like jazz infused and everything like i wanted more of that Mm -hmm. but that's why i didn't really like this this song was just because it's the ending track and i wanted more from it and it didn't do that like Like you could you could sorry you could have went off on like uh you know an instrumental Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could have done something like that to like close it off or like how they've been doing where they throw like a little instrumental in there and then throw it off with some closing lyrics. Then I'd be like, okay. Mm-hmm. But the way it just ends, it just stopped. And it's like, all right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I get what you guys saying. You know, it's kind of like we usually get the climax with the last song or at least like the second to last song. But yeah. once we hit our climax, we have three more songs. Yeah. You know, so I, I could see why you guys would think this would be a, uh, less than favorable outro track because uh you know we, we've been giving straight chaos yeah. and for it to just end like this uh, is yeah he's made a fair point like i said all the other albums that we reviewed they've given us really good mm-hmm. outros or last songs right i kind of like this outro i understand why you guys didn't get what you wanted from this because you're right it does kind of end abruptly and you know that build up and then the madness and then it just kind of eh, You know what I mean? So, like, I get that, and I get why that's, you know, not exactly satisfying for such an abrasive album. But I kind of liked it because, if you guys recall, it's almost akin to Sugar Zoo with the, lyrically, with the, with, what's his name? Frost? Yeah. Freddy Frost? Huh? Getting bodied? Yeah, that full (laughs) fucking croaks, and the audience is laughing applauding all the way home mm-hmm. just as in the same way that everybody was laughing and that fool getting murked in the boxing match like i i think that it's a lovely way to to wrap up that sort of theme and wrap up this album because it's like they're giving you your all you, they're doing everything that they can and this might be the last leg that they stand on but it's not enough all right imagine you know? imagine if they finish it off with like a bruce Buffer announcement, like you know, okay, that would be hard as fuck. That'd be hard, bro. That'd like, be hard. Yo, I'd be bro. body slamming for you, bro. Yeah, so like the way they started it off, like that, like welcome. Yeah, imagine you know, all yeah. that. Like they yeah. could have at least ended it like that. Like I didn't even think about that until just now. And like especially with like the whole halftime, mm-hmm. you know, like with the static of the radio or anything, it could have been something like as corny as like thank you for tuning in, like blah blah blah. Like it oh, could have been, cool. it could have been something like that. And we we just got like the da 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 da. And then that was it. Right. But don't you think that the death of an artist is akin is enough to end an album? Like, I mean, I know that we're only with this one protagonist for this one song, but like it's a whole this person bears their entire soul for their last concert to end this album. Like I, I think it's fitting in within the themes of the album, I, I should say. You're right in the aspect that this album is so chaotic that if you're expecting a good outro, this is you weren't yeah. expecting this. I yeah. can see that, but all the other all the other death we got in this album, it ended off so beautifully that this one just stopped. 
Right. So it like, was more poignant in the other ones. Yeah. And so like what Marco said, like maybe that is just black media be like, ha, you thought we were going to go this way? Watch. Left turn. Boom. Yeah. So done. I could also get that yeah. too. But mm-hmm. just like I, I do like the song. It's just as an outro, I kind of did. I did expect more. That's fair. That was it. That's fair. Because I mean, it's- I like the story. I did. Um, obviously, the instruments and everything. It was just as an outro, I expected it to like fade out or something, and I didn't get it. Which is fair because off the other albums that we reviewed, they give they gave <laughs> us fucking really good. Exactly. Outros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a No Country for Old Men ending. If anybody has seen Definitely. that movie. Like they're true, yeah, it, you're true. But that movie fucked, like fucked with you too. Exactly, so. and this album, just like this album, album fucked with you. Yeah. I'm saying that's why I brought exactly. up. Like, may, well, maybe they were expecting the listeners to be like, "Yo, you know, be a uh, long ass <laughs> outro." Well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, just to give a little bit of context, so for this last song, we're introduced to some random ass fool named Freddie Frost, um, and I, I guess he was just like. In the context of the song, he was just some kind of like an entertainer or like some type of artist. Um, And this is essentially like his big outro. You know, this is his final concert, his final show. And he's just going to like lay it out all on the line. It's like this big grandiose type of uh, type of setting. You know, he has 65 daughters (laughs) who are like (laughs) setting the stage for you. And uh, like, well, I think they say it takes like two or three hours for them to finish. So his 65 daughters are like giving this big old like intro for him. And then he comes out and he's essentially listing off like these 27 questions, you know, hence the name of the song, uh, listing off these 27 questions that kind of revolve around like, you know, mortality and, um, like philosophical type of things. Um, almost got like a, uh, Rodney Dangerfield kind of vibe from him. How so? Cause he's always like, I ain't getting no respect, and like that oh. was like his mantra while he was alive. And mm-hmm. I feel like this fool was like clinging for that, you know what I mean, longing for it. And then at Ooh. the end, like he still didn't get it. He still didn't, <laughs> he still get, didn't get it. Get yeah, it. yeah. And he yeah. died on stage, and people were laughing at him. They're like, yeah, like what? What? What's the ending lyric? It says. But we all just laughed at the sad old oaf and laughed all the way home, man. I like, yeah. And then you know he. As he's like listing off these twenty-seven questions, he has like my last shot at the big time post hummus or post posthumous paste. Will I find home or go to waste? I mean, like you said, he's laying it out all on the line. You know, he spent his whole life kind of withering away, fucking around. Is this really like in death? Will he finally become this big figure that he wants to be? No, just fucking laugh at him. I was gonna go back to like the ending. I mean, because he says, you know, so thank you for listening. Good night. Good night. Like the lyrics, I liked how he ended it with the lyrics, but just to back up with what I was saying earlier, like I wish it would have just been like a longer outro. Um, but I just caught it now. So right here he says, that's not quite 27, but my chest feels awfully tight. There's only 21 questions. I didn't catch that. No? Oh, <laughs> no, until yeah. just now. I went and oh. counted them. I caught on 21. I was like, wait. <laughs> Shout out 50 Cent. <laughs> Word. <laughs> 50. Oh, uh. man. Black me just keeps you on your toes. Dude. So, yeah. So, like I said, 27 Questions was really kind of like the uh, the last song that kind of matched the energy of Welcome to Hell and the Race is About to Begin. You know, that real chaotic kind of sound. Not to say the other songs don't have chaos within them, but they're a little bit more subdued. Um, eat Men Eat is probably like the step <laughs> below that. Uh, in this song, we're given like this really weird, random story about two men who are uh, they're gay lovers and... They're like traversing through a desert and then they come upon some like random like mining shaft to yeah. look for their homies to look Fuck. for their homies. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. It's your everyday occurrence. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So I, I didn't realize that they were like looking for people. I thought that it was just these two dudes lost in the desert. That's Word. how I interpreted it. Well, I, I, I thought they were looking for their homies and then they, wander upon this fucking mining shaft full of fucking red red wine <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah and, and they then, get played and then they get oh they fucking get fucking played, bop, they get played dog. they get roofied this song is one of the craziest songs lyrically i've ever heard in my life this motherfucker is making a wine out of fucking stomach acid spoiler alert like <laughs> jesus christ bro this shit is no pun intended. <laughs> Word. No fucking <laughs> pun intended, bro. Nice. 
Um, I literally cannot say enough about how shocked I was the first time I heard this song. Because, n- not because of like, oh, wow, this is so... Like, literally because I wouldn't even fathom to think of something so absurd. And that's why it blew me away. Also, the vocal delivery on Eat Man Eat... Eat, yeah, man, eat. just sounded so fucking evil, bro. Yeah, yeah it's because it's so it's satanic. in the perspective of the captain telling his workers to eat the food, which is laced with poison to make their stomach acids go awry and also make them comatose. Like that's so brilliant. And then at the end, where the captain curses the two lovers. Th- his vocals were so oh, fucking powerful. When when it has says burn, yes, burn, burn, and it has like that ah, vocal yeah. effect. Oh, dude! And then everything about the ending was so good. Were you? Saying? Yeah, no. Just for reference, this is the first song that we get the uh, the bass player as a lead singer. That is correct. Yeah. Shout out Cameron. Shout out Cameron Picton. The vocals were a very nice change of pace when you hear them in the progression of this album. Because mm-hmm. How Fire and Sugar Zoo was, you know a lot Mm -hmm. and then you get this and it's like a it's like a break from that and then okay whatever then we go to to welcome to hell and and that's like you know really funky i get like primus vibes from it and then he hits you again on still still, like yeah i I think his vocal placement on the album was very very well done because he's the one that starts it off right correct yeah because so when you start it off because like obviously like they're playing the character it's just so well and then isaac like you said especially when the captain is speaking especially at the end and how it just peaks and then he just goes off i mean i can't get into the lyrics so you just have to you just have to go (laughs) listen to the lyrics and truly just hear it because it's like haunting it's probably the head would you say that those are the heaviest vocal deliveries on the entire album yes heaviest yeah i would agree with that Mm -hmm. I would agree, but I, I think that's one thing that we definitely have to um, reiterate is, like, not only the bass player, you know, singing on this, like, both him and the main lean singer, like, have p- so much emotion in the lyrics throughout the whole True. album, oh, you yeah. know? They, they project their voices in such a great way, you know? I mean, just when he's speaking as the captain for that outro, you can literally just picture two people running away with the captain in the background just yelling at them. Yeah, dude. It's it's haunting. Like, I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, man. It. It's so thematic. So thematic. This whole album feels like a fucking opera, you know? What's also beautiful is that you could picture everything. And and I know that's like the whole point of music is it's supposed to, you know, invoke a type of feeling or, you know, you know, you get these, you know, mental images in your head. He literally tells you what's going on. And if your imagination is dope enough, you can literally see the agony on these fools' faces. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, as they say, quote unquote, the song hand in hand being okay being poisoned because they know they're gonna come back as a hero yeah because they blew up the fucking mine like it's just so like you could see them riding in the sunset on the horizon of a desert (laughs) you know with 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 the mirage waves going and they're just the captain's just yelling at it (laughs) yeah and with the captain and with the echoing of the captain yeah like it's just so it's so vibrant I guess mm-hmm. I, I I can't think of a another word to describe a picture in my head more than just yeah. vibrant, picturesque. It's very picturesque, mm-hmm. painting esque, everything esque. <laughs> God damn. So again, you know, we we started with still, which still is probably like the most laid back song we have. Um, amazing song. Just real quick, I have to just reiterate, it's amazing. God. I fucking love that song i agree um so then the other two tracks we're left with are dangerous liaisons and the defense um both a little bit more subdued i think i think dangerous liaisons kind of like mixes a little bit of everything within the song um i'm not gonna lie to you you know the theme is really cool i I like the theme uh the song is basically revolved around a farmhand being hired to like murder somebody and by the devil by the devil yeah the devil hires some random farmhand to fucking strangle somebody um so the lyrics are cool and uh you know the picture is painted very vibrant like you said it's very it's it's a really cool setting very vivid yes great great word um but the sound of dangerous liaisons didn't really get me 
I, I'm not going to lie. I, I think uh, sonically, it just wasn't really for me. What about the pianos after the plot twist is revealed that it was the devil? I love I love that pianos. part. I agree. So, yeah. So, in the beginning of the song, you don't find out that it is it is the devil. It just comes up as like a, like a mafia type guy mm-hmm. looking for, you know, hey, do you want a, you want a job? You know, you want some work? And then towards the end of the theme, that's when this mobster person actually shows himself as the devil to the farmhand. And then that's when he gets like haunting with the, the piano and all the, the rest of the instruments. In perfect him. storytelling though. Literally perfect. It, it is. Yeah. It's perfect storytelling. It is man. That's crazy that you can vibe with this one. Yeah. I, I don't, well, I no No, I agree. I, I think the pianos plays pretty well, but overall I, I think it's just like, this song's like five minutes, four minutes and like everything leading up to that just didn't really, it didn't really do much for me, you know. It's uh maybe not skippable because again I really like the themes, but uh, compared you know, to everything it, else that we've been getting. Compared to everything else, yeah. Compared to everything else, I think uh, the songs that we've heard previously have, you know, executed sonically wise at least a lot better than this one did. Would know? you say it's almost more contemporary? As far as accessible. It's more contemporary compared to the rest of the tracks that were so grandiose and so chaotic. This is a more like structured song, and that's why I didn't hook you because it didn't really Ooh. do anything crazy, and it was one of the longer tracks. Uh, not really, because I think "Still" is the most accessible, and I think "Still" is an amazing song. It's my favorite song in the whole thing. So, I don't think it's the fact that they turned it down. I just think that it, like it, do anything it, it just didn't do it. much right exactly right. exactly would you say it's a filler uh it could be a filler considered a filler no because again i i think the themes are interesting enough to where i can like look past the kind of the sound of it and again like if i go back to my whole thinking of like the album is just songs of sin you know this is just another song of sin so it serves its purpose in that sense um but again like is it my favorite definitely not you know, I, but, um, is it your least favorite? It's my least favorite. You're yes. Crazy. What? It's That's my least insane. favorite. Yeah. It's my least favorite. But again, like the themes are just so interesting and this, the storytelling is just so good. I can't say I just straight up don't like so it. So, you know what you know? this reminds me of? This is the reason why I asked you if you think it's a filler is because it reminds me of, uh, short fictions. How so? Some of those tracks when I was like, well, they're not really doing anything for me. They're just fillers. They're still good tracks. They're just like really generic oh. uh, pop punk mm-hmm. tracks, but they're not really, they're just, they're serving its purpose. And right. That's it. That's, that's it. They're not my favorite. They're not my least favorite, but they're just like fillers. That's oh. All, that's why I was asking you. I see. Some people are as useless as lids on a fish. That by itself. <laughs> shoot, oh my that God. by itself should shoot it to like top three right there. <laughs> I, have that, I have that in my fucking nose. I love that lyric. Dude. I literally tweeted it, dog. <laughs> how many retweets did you get zero oh pussy how many likes did you get one hey one. that's good enough yeah they, they know that real shit no that's probably one of the hardest bars on this whole thing honestly so then the last track right here is the defense uh or the last track that we kind of have to wrap up on um a song about running a brothel about being a pimp um what, what did you guys think about this song this is probably like next to still the most subdued song yeah uh it's funny because this song sounds like super sweet and melodic and it picks just, up it, it picks up a little bit but i think for the most part it's very serene you know it actually sounds kind of beautiful and the whole time this dude's like yeah my girls are going to hell like you know basically like justifying why he's pimping out these chicks it's it's, yeah. it's a pretty cool like dichotomy between and it's the not two. even them going to hell true and it's yeah not going exactly to hell. Go, in on that. go in on that it's him going to hell at the end of the day. It's him committing <laughs> all the fucking sins, and he's over here playing, acting like he's fucking like, yo, fuck this. Like, all these bitches are going to go to fucking hell instead of me. <laughs> at the end of it, Satan comes out and grabs him from fucking his feet. Mm-hmm. Oof. Boom. Talk about fucking... I wish that was me, to be honest. <laughs> what? <laughs> Drag me to hell, baby. Let's go. Oh. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm about to start playing some hoser, bro. <laughs> Take me to church, bro. Jesus Christ. If you're scared to go to church, dog. <laughs> I ain't scared. If you <laughs> If you scared, go to church. Oh, that's okay, shout out. Oh, nah, shout I, out but I love fuck. the lyrics on this. Yeah. I love that it's like essentially mocking the holier than thou 
persona that most people, you know, cling on. You know what I mean? Like so many people of a more traditional religion always kind of give that holier than thou. Well, yeah, I mean, you do this, but I'm still a Christian. I won't do that, but. And then they still break their fucking own rules of their own religion. So, like, all right, let's, let's go a little bit more in depth. They're saying, like, yes, exactly, 100%. But then you have these fathers that commit horrendous crimes. Completely, mm-hmm. completely. Horrendous completely. crimes. And it's just like, well, you know, I'm preaching over here every fucking Sunday, every Wednesday, oh, and shit facts. like that. And on the side, they're committing those fucking... Adultery. Uh, exactly. I mean, bro, the lyric... But find me a Christian who spends as much time on their knees. <laughs> <laughs> and so like how, and like how earlier we we're trying to how Bongo was trying to justify his addiction and how he tries to justify here. A brothel is a business no different than a bank as safe and as formal and sanitary. My girl's all destined for hell. Jesus. Are we like sure the same said, Bongo? Right. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> Oh, the worst. Bongos has, vid- has visited this man's brothel. Oh, 100%. 100%. Oh, 100%. 100%. But like Marco said it best, I mean, this man just like trying to justify himself and really he's the one in the end who's going to – he's the one going to hell. Mm-hmm. He has to be the one to repent. Lord. Well, again, uh, good storytelling on this fucking track. Again, really solid storytelling on every track. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, the uh, – yeah, Gordy? Gordy? I'm gonna say Gordy. <laughs> yeah, Gordy's storytelling on this is fucking phenomenal. Um, I, I guess one thing that we haven't really touched on that I think is kind of important to talk about is his delivery. He has the weirdest, like most obtuse fucking. He sings like this. He sings. <laughs> he sings very bottom of the throat, and he starts talking real fast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, like very it, spoken word. Very spoken word, and he's able to like bend it to the song that he's you know uh like singing for it's no to just i'm so sorry but <laughs> that sounded extremely rude and I'm, i apologize <laughs> but you got it flipped because i thought about this listening to this whole album over and over again it's the instruments that make him sound good oh you the think instruments, so the way the way he has spoken words uh-huh. and the way he stops nonchalantly like that and the instruments just like follow along i mean you could be right they could be like okay well i'm gonna do this and this but i felt like the instruments were literally like the backbone of it oh okay I mean, I I can see both. I I don't fault you for thinking that. Mm-hmm. Like, and then if anybody thought that uh, the lead singer was, you know, the backbone, I could see their their point of view. You know, I I think the best way to describe it is they worked in perfect harmony. A hundred percent. A hundred. They're made for each other. You know, he's uh, I I don't think you could put him in any other band in this shit, and like he would fit in. You know, like as you said, the instruments are kind of like the backbone. Well, take away the instruments and the chaos. Does his does his like vocal delivery work just as well, you know, with no. a more quote unquote normal type of sound? It probably wouldn't, you know, like this band just works so weirdly, but perfectly together, you know, they're in sync, dude. They're really tuned together. 100%. That's literally what I was thinking throughout this whole album was because I hated, I had a love hate for thing. I got used to it when he was doing that spoken word shit, mm-hmm. but <laughs> it's, it's the instruments that like, reassured me and there's like yo this actually like you know it was on beat they were really synchronized and it made it sound a lot better and i was i fucked with it and then real quick shout out to the drummer i mean the the instruments are played to perfection on this you know everybody deserves shout out but dude this drummer how the fuck do you keep pace with this shit how the fuck do you keep a rhythm with this shit like 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 have you have you ever rode on a ride that's like (laughs) Like the fucking UFO ride at the state fair. Fuck that ride. <laughs> like, it's just so dizzying. There's just so much happening. You got these fools screaming on both sides of you. There's, you know, people going wild and the you're spinning at however many miles per hour. And you just have to, like, focus on that one thing to kind of ground you, you know. <laughs> you got to look at the ground. You have to close your eyes and really think about it. Like, that's what the drums, I feel like, do on this. You know, like, if everything is just sounding super chaotic and super, like, like maddening, if you just focus in on the drums, then it kind of gives you a little bit of sense of balance and like a sense of like grounding to it. You know, this drum is a fucking beast. You, you know, the, you know, the people who will like stand up in that ride. Yeah. That's the drummer. <laughs> that's the drummer. <laughs> that's <She's> true. The, <laughs> <laughs> the people that be doing cartwheels while that shit's going like, fucking, 
But that's the jazz. That's the jazz. That's it's the, the jazz. jazz fusion. And he he doesn't have to keep up because in a sense, they're all going off on their own thing. Mm-hmm. It's all just madness. Like how we said from the beginning, everybody's just doing their own thing and it all just blends in. Yeah. Okay. I think we could start wrapping this up. Uh, any other final thoughts, tracks, lyrics, anything? I think we did a solid no, we're good. Yeah, we, with the chaos we've been given, I think we kind of, <laughs> you know, until you listen to this album, you'll really understand like the fucking chaos of this shit. But uh, I feel like we kind of did a good job at reeling it in. I guess you'll see for yourself. It's um, a motherfucking painting. Sure. It's, a fucking, it's a Van Gogh. It's not no Picasso. It's not no fucking <laughs> Da Vinci. It's a fucking Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Okay, I like it. This fool cut it's off a, his ear before he painted that shit. I, no, Dude. A, I wouldn't be surprised if a year later, one of these motherfuckers... <laughs> this fool cut off their pinky to play the fucking <laughs> solo. <or what>? Yeah. <laughs> Literally. I'm calling it right now. Uh, all right, then. Let's go ahead and finish it up. Uh, final thoughts, final review, and top three tracks. Isaac, start us off. Yeah, so this album... I was new to this band, new to this sound, not really new to this sound. I'm I'm more uh, familiar with uh, prog rock and, you know, for those who don't know, progressive rock, you know, and really this was a treat. This was something to behold. This was a, a moment in time, really. Like I haven't listened to anything like this in a very long time, if ever, and to this magnitude, of course. Um, it is very good, very, very experimental and very, very, uh, hit or miss. It was definitely a home run, you know, knock it out of the park for me, but I could understand fully if you think otherwise. So that being said, phenomenal album. Phenomenal, as you guys pointed out, uh, uh, instrumentals, you know, playing sonically, ph- phenomenal vo- vocal delivery, everything about it. The lyrics on this, the progression of each song was really good. The progression of the album itself was really good. So really, really loved it. Uh, my top three tracks would be Still, uh, The Race is About to Begin, and Welcome to Hell. All of those tracks do something for me that not a lot of music does. They, they each, you know, scratch an inch that I didn't know I even had. So, shout outs to those songs. Uh, with that being said, I will give this an eight and a half out of ten. Fuck yeah. All right. So, as I said from the beginning, this album was beautiful, dark, and it's a chaotic madness, and it has me wanting more. I want more of these short stories. I want, you know, I want more of this vocal delivery. I want more of this jazz fusion with the rock. I want more of the drums. This album was amazing, not knowing what I was getting myself into. So, I mean, shout out for the recommendation. This this has been on repeat for like the past week. Yes. So, not just for this review, just in general. This album has been on repeat. Um, the Gordy... He kept me entertained throughout the entire album with the stories. Um, I really love the theme of the album. And again, just to em- emphasize on the instruments, that guitar, I, the guitar and the drums alone like did it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely was not expecting that. And so I would say the instruments definitely carried it for me. Um, and the short stories and the lyrics and everything was just like the nice cherry on top. Nice. Um, that being said, uh, I, I'm excited for what they have coming out next. I'm definitely going to keep my eye out on this band. Um, definitely, I would say this is definitely top five album of the year for me. Already? This album, nice top five. This album was that good. Top three tracks. I got Welcome to Hell, Sugar Zoo, The Race is About to Begin, and Honorable Mention, Eat Many. Nice. Final score, shout out Isaac, eight and a half. This album was this album was the shit <laughs> sick love to hear it uh my final reviews was that i thought this album was uh van gogh painting really classic painting i think uh this would uh grow into something that i could go back to and appreciate and so will everyone else that gives it a listen 
Um, the things that these guys have done is astonishing, um, to say the least. And they succeeded with their storytelling, with their production, and with their synchronization between the band members. So everything from the first to the last track was amazing. Uh, I give it an 8.5, same as Keenan. Still a really high up their album. I don't know if it's going to land in my top three or top five for the uh, album of the year. Mm -hmm. Because this is uh, the the cousin that you keep in the basement from <laughs> Anton up there. <laughs> <laughs> this is as from up there is like that stepdad and then this is the step this is the you know the adopted son you keep in the baby Jesus <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is to me man but uh favorite tracks um welcome to hell eat man eat and those two could be interchanged but my number one track favorite track off the album is still uh okay so it's just gonna be 8.5 across the board 8.5 for me too Sick. um yeah, this song is, or this album is just basically like a hellish fucking opera, man. It's insane. It, it's literally what Marcos described at the beginning, uh, organized chaos. It's, um, upon first listen, it's very easy to get overwhelmed and to think it's just a whole bunch of jumble, you know? But the more you listen to it, the more you're able to pick out, you know, intricacies and different rhythms and different harmonies. Um, you know, as we said, Gordy is an amazing songwriter and uh, lyricist, as well as the bassist. You know, the two songs that he had uh, as a lead singer, he fucking shined really well. Um, it, it's just kind of hard to uh, not repeat what you guys have said. You know, it, it's really astonishing what they've kind of what they've achieved. Um, yeah, 8.5 uh, top three tracks in order. Number three is going to be Welcome to Hell. Number two, Eat Men Eat. And number one, Still, by far and away. Still is amazing. Like, even if you don't listen to this whole album, you need to listen to Still. Still is. And it's, I mean, it helps that it's the most accessible, but man. Oh, God, I can't. I can't. I can't. You know? But that'll wrap up our review of Hellfire by Black Midi. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know what you think. If you haven't listened to it, please listen to it and let us know. Uh, I can almost guarantee you haven't heard any shit like this, at least this year, maybe ever. Um, real quick, you know who the lead singer kind of reminds me of, Keenan? Gordy? He reminds me of uh, Tomata from uh, The Screamers. Oof. That's a good one. He kind of reminds me of him. I can see that. Yeah, sorry. I just had to throw that in real quick. And you know what's funny? <laughs> He reminds me of the lead singer of Shame. Oh. I think it was the vocal delivery, like the very, like the post-punk part of him. Uh-huh. And so I think that's why I got like the Shame sound from it. Right. But that's funny that you thought that though. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, again, thank you guys for listening. Let us know what you think. Uh, until next time. Uh, I was going to say we out, but I always say that. You gotta keep it. Baby. I just say it? Okay, okay, okay. Till next time, we out. Later. Bye.